my mom grabbed that scan, put it in her Bible. But I guess her chest was just like. And I was just like, yeah, 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 yeah. But I was thinking, I still can't go home. Did you not hear that part? Like, you're. Is that mommy? Give me high five. I'm joking. So, take one. So, today our topic is going to be about how. Hey, guys! everyone we are back this week hey. to discuss how we got pregnant well obviously you know how we got pregnant it's a bit obvious <laughs> um, how we found out how we were like when we found out reactions and stuff i got my nails done finally guys today i decided to do my nails even though that means she's gonna be cold this week <laughs> For nails, no gas, but it's fine. I've got this thick job. That's on. it. You know. I'm joking. <laughs> so, so, how I found out, my mum actually told me. You know, mums always have that motherly instinct. Yeah. Like they always know, like whatever. So I was just messed like. Well, I wasn't living my best life. I wasn't wild. I was actually a church girl. You know. Hey. You know not. I was actually a prim and proper church girl, I was minding my own business. You see, this we came to represent. You know, I someone chirped me. <laughs> And then all of a sudden I was on <laughs> in the wrong ways, <laughs> doing the wrong things. And then my mom was just like, oh, um, she's just like, when was the last time, you know, you had your period? And I was just like, oh, you know, sometime. And she's like, I think you need to get checked. And I was like, mom, no. So then she convinced me because obviously after a while, you know your body, I was starting to get concerned. So then I finally went to the doctor. And then I remember the nurse was just like, you're pregnant. And straight away I was just like, okay, so what's the process? How do you book the abortion and all of that jazz? I didn't even think about it twice. I was just like, this, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> no, honestly, I was just saying, I'm not ready for this. I'm still a child myself. I didn't think twice about it. I went home to my mom, told her that, yeah, you're right, I'm pregnant. We went as far as making the appointment, followed me to the abortion clinic, and I remember I sat down with a like a therapist or a counsellor she was asking me like a bunch of questions like to make sure it wasn't my mum that was pressuring me into doing the abortion and then i remember going into the room yeah and i remember she scanned my belly and the scan like there was a pr he looked like the science of a prawn like it was so tiny and i remember <laughs> i came out and obviously first time being pregnant first time having a scan you're not really well for me i wasn't really attached to anything i didn't want to look at it too tough my mum grabbed that scan in her Bible, but I guess her chest was just like, Don't do it. I'm like, what are you doing? You're not supposed to do this. Like, I'm here making a big decision. Don't come and pressure me. And then I remember after that, the whole family found out. Like, I wasn't ready at all. To the point where I think I was like three months. I think I was three months. And then one day I just woke up and I was like, I'm doing this. Like, yeah. I was like, I'm not doing this. I called the dad and I was just like, I don't want to do this. And I was getting ready to just book the appointment again, but not tell my family. And then I went to church. <laughs> I, heard, <laughs> I heard a sermon, felt the conviction, and just, you know, decided to face my front, face my responsibilities, and then just mm -hmm. went through it. But I was so, my story. Oh. So basically, at the time when I found out I was pregnant, I was actually living in the south of France. Mm. Yeah, I was doing a year sure, placement. Cool. Yeah, it was alright. It was part of my degree. But, um, so basically, I just kept feeling tired and I kept falling asleep and I just didn't understand why. But I thought because it was hot and, you know, mm. all of that malarkey. And plus I'm anemic, so that's normally when I haven't got enough iron in my system, that's what happens. Mm. So I was just like, yeah, well, you know, I didn't think much of it because, yeah. Mm. I still had a period, so, yeah, oh. I still had a period, so... At pregnancy didn't come to my mind anyway so basically I came I must have come down to London um, just before the Christmas break yeah and we was going out on a night me and my friends had planned to go out on a night out so we went to one big party in the O2 like it was I don't know what the event was but it was like some big event in the O2 I went there and then before we went there we met up at my friend's house and was pre-drinking but for some reason I kept complaining that I had a stomach ache and like everything I tried to put on wasn't fitting me but I didn't think anything of it at that time I was just like oh my gosh nothing's fitting me and I had to buy something of my friends to wear because everything I bought 
just didn't seem to fit and it just looked like I was squashing myself into it. Went to the club now, had all these drinks and by the way in the South Park we was drinking and everything as well. Um, went to the event and then halfway through the event like I kept sitting down because I kept complaining that I wasn't feeling well but I didn't understand like why I wasn't feeling well. I thought maybe because I was tired obviously I just mm. came off a plane and I was now going out. Then my other friend yeah she was like oh cheer up and then she must have punched me in my stomach and I was just like <laughs> I literally thought, oh, my days. From when she punched me in my stomach, that was it. I just had this aching pain here for the whole night. Like, we had to leave. Like, I had to leave, um, left the party. Like, for the whole night, I sat down. And then towards the end of the night, I was just like, I need to go home. I was in so much pain. Like, I didn't understand why I was in so much pain. And then the following day, not the following day, but it was a Sunday. The following day after that, on the Monday, I booked an appointment with my GP and I was just like, oh, I've got this belly ache and I, and I was telling her, I thought, because I was, I knew I was travelling back and it, the hospital would have, I mean, the GP would have been closed for the Christmas holiday period, you know. I thought, let me go there now and see them and ask them for some iron tablets because I was like, oh, you know, I'm falling asleep and all that, I'm mm. tired and everything and I know that's the symptom to anemia. There now and I was explaining to her and then she was like, oh, let's just do a routine pregnancy test, blah, 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 because you're sexually act active. And I was just like, yeah, okay then, why not? Yeah. And um, did one. And then the woman came back and she was like, oh my God, Christmas has come early. Congratulations. I was looking at her like, what? <laughs> what did you just say? And she was just like, oh, Christmas has come early. I was like, huh? And she's like, yeah, um, congratulations, you're pregnant. I just froze. <laughs> I was like, what? she was so excited for me, like, and she was just like, oh my day, Christmas. And then I was just, I just sat there looking at her, like, I was thinking she's gonna be like, ban her or James, <laughs> ban her, <laughs> yeah, or something. Like, I thought, nah, this woman's literally pulling my leg. And she was being dead serious, all this over, like, she was so hyper, and I was just like, whoosh. <laughs> And then I just stopped. And then when I realised that she was actually being dead serious, I just burst into tears and I was like, I can't go home. I can't go home. I'm staying right here. And she was like, oh no, darling, it's okay. Oh my gosh, we can get you through this. And I was looking at her, I was like, no, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Literally, yeah, she was just doing the most. I was like, I can't go home. No way. And I was thinking, if I go home today and someone knows I'm pregnant, I'm dying. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not making it out of here alive. So like after half an hour sitting in that GV room, yeah, crying my eyes out, I was like, what am I gonna do? I was just like, okay, and then she's like, okay, well I'm gonna give you your options, but um, to be honest, I don't think you should go down this route, but I need to give you your options, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, yeah, give me my option. And then she was telling me about, if I want, by explaining the whole procedure about mm. having an abortion and how you would need to um, speak to a counsellor beforehand and they would need to assess you. And, and I was just like, yeah, 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 yeah. But I was thinking, I still can't go home. Did you not hear that part? You're like, you're, <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about Yeah, I was like, thank you. I don't think you know my parents, like, Luckily, my mum was abroad at this time because my mum, like, she travels to and from the country. But um, anyways, I took the information and I went home and I just didn't say anything. I was just like, okay, basically, I'm just going to get through this Christmas period and then I'm going to fly back to the south of France and then I'm going to decide what I'm going to do then. have your baby in France. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, no, I was not going to have my baby in France. I just thought, yeah, I'm going to... My decision, I was just like, I don't know, like, I was confused. I was in two minds because I was just like... What, what, I don't know, I just didn't know what I was going to do. How did you tell your dad? No, not your dad. How did you tell the dad? Yeah, dad. <laughs> um, I just said it in the calmest way possible. Like, I didn't, those things, you don't know how to break it down. I just remember we were just, like, chilling. And then I just looked at him and I was just like, I'm pregnant. But I just said it and then his reaction was silence. <laughs> he was just silent, it was just like, swear. I was like, yeah. <laughs> it went quite, it went better than I expected. It was quite a short. How did you tell your baby daddy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. As I said, I was in the south of France, so. <laughs> Living your best life. And I wasn't even with him. <laughs> yeah, so we was like, rocky, hockey, fucky. I wasn't even speaking to him, so the last thing. I really wanted to communicate to him about was me having his baby. Yeah. Told his mum and then 
I told him after I told his mum. It's crazy. But yeah. My friends were basically really supportive. Like they were so overwhelmed and they were happy. Like um, they would check on me, they threw me a baby shower, they bought Aww. me very nice gifts. Um, like they were so so supportive, like I didn't even expect that. And even the people that I thought, mm, you're a bit iffy, I don't even know if they're really my friend or I really care. And they came through like, oh yeah, it was nice. It was really nice to know that I was loved. And obviously I was the first baby of the group, so. Aww, so everyone is basically Yay! everyone's baby. It was basically everyone's baby and like, you know, they all just wanted to smuggle and smuggle my little munchkin and it was just like yay hey introduction i told my friends oh my gosh so imagine i told one of my friends and she was like my bestie at the time so i told her first and she was the only person i knew out of all my friends so one day we go to church and it was just like you know in the service and then another one, one of my friends was with us and then she asked to you know use my bible this happened to be the same bible that my mum put my son's scan in so, as she's flipping through the Bible, looking through the she sees the scan, <laughs> she sees my name at the top, and then she's looking at me like... Obviously it's awkward because we have to be quiet, there's a service going on, but you, my friend just found out that like, I'm pregnant, she doesn't even know. That's how she found out, she's like, do you're pregnant, no, 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 no. Basically, like, started telling me, do you know what people are going to think of you? Like, do you know if anyone, like, respects you? And this is what so is going to think of you, this is what dinner is going to be like, this is not what I want to hear right now. Like, the last thing I need to think about is what everyone's going to think about me. I already think less of myself, let alone trying to think mm. of what everyone else is thinking about me. Like, I'm here in this predicament. I'm, like, a child myself. I don't know what I'm going to do. And you're here telling me, you is going to think this and this and this. But I'm not going to lie, like, that, that one, that reaction just put me off. Because at that point, from up until that point, I had a lot of positive energy around me. Oh, yeah, your family and stuff. Yeah. The thing is, is, sometimes you need to have discernment with the kind of friends that you have around you. Thank God, like, I had more people supporting me than, like, voices against it. You look back and just be like, thank God you stood your ground and you didn't, you know, succumb to the pressure and just, like, care about what everyone thought about you. Yeah. And you just fell through because it's, it's hard living with regrets. But what I say is that, Definitely writing out what you need to do before you ever even end up in a situation like this is that you need to reevaluate your circle. Like, the people you carry around with you are so important. And literally, if someone's there just taking, 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 and they're not giving, just be giving, or you know, it's not something that's working both ways, you need to drop them because, in the long run, you might just have to learn the hard way. Literally, in situations where you're going through stuff where you there's so much going through your mind and you find yourself in situations where you don't know what to think, you don't know what to do. Mm. The last thing you need is like a judgmental friend or, or mm. someone being judgmental. Do you know what I mean? So unsupportive it's, friend. Exactly. Unsupportive anybody. Obviously with family, what yeah. can you do? They're your family, they're your flesh and blood, you can't really get rid of them. But with friends, you have a lot of control um, over who's around you, who has a say in what goes on in your life, yeah. the direction that it goes in. I had... In, like, before I was pregnant and the friends that I had, like, when my son came, changed dramatically. Because of the way how they're feeding me, the energy yeah. that they're feeding me. It gets draining, like, going through the process and being in the situation and then facing, like, judgmental people at the same time. So after a while, you have to just cut out one or the other. And I, there was no way I was cutting out my son. So if you're negative, you gotta go. Ah, bitches. <laughs> if you're able to sur surround yourself with people like that, then the experience would be not as challenging as it would be if it was in your mm, yeah, situation. Exactly. And my family, they, oh, I've got family in every corner of London. Mm -hmm. So they are always there, they will always be there. And you know, I've got a babysitter wherever I wanna go, whenever I wanna go out because mm. my family's so big. And, and I don't really have a choice but to love my child. Like it's not optional. <laughs> I just felt like my family made up for my friends at the mm. time. So even though I had a bunch of like judgmental people and judgmental friends and whatnot, my support system was so strong and so solid that it was easy for me to block them out. Yeah, no. Honestly, it's very important to have a good support system. Yeah. Even if you have difficulties with your family or with your friends, just try your best to surround yourself with the 
positive environment, positive mm. energy, whether you find that in your church, whether you find that in your friends, whether you find that in your family, you need to just gravitate towards where it's at because your mental health is the most important thing, especially when you're carrying a child, getting prepared to look after a child in yeah. another life. You need to just care about you. And so you only, you only. But guys, that was our version of the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Now that was our experience guys, but we want to hear about your experiences. Let us know, share your stories yeah. with us. And guys, thank you for tuning in. Once again. Because I know listening to us talk. Can't Imagine. Be, I was thinking you would actually listen, but you're listening, so thank you. And thanks for watching guys. Once again, like, subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get yeah. this right eventually. Like, comment and subscribe guys. And all that jazz. All that jazz, all that jazz. Thanks for watching. Bye.